Hispanics and Romanians and everybody in Central and Eastern Europe in the long term, that still remains to be seen if it comes to fruition. A well-known uh, historian and literary critic, and at one point I believe uh, president of the Hungarian uh, Writers Association, uh, Homogaj uh, Bela, wrote that self-government has surfaced more than once, has become an organic part of Hungarian policy in Transylvania as well. So autonomy and Transylvania go together quite well. Of course, the Magyars controlled the Carpath Metnets, the uh, Carpathian Basin from the 11th to the 13th centuries, and a lot of free settlement of non-Magyar peoples there, including Czechs, Germans, and et cetera. And this was, according to Wojtesz uh, Ivan, the an excuse me, an autonomy unparalleled during the age. Furthermore, in this long history, there's King Andrew. Uh, he had his diploma, which unified and ensured special privileges for German Saxon settlers in Transylvania. This is most likely, and I haven't found anything to the contrary, the oldest autonomy law in existence. Other Europeans fled the Turks in the early 1500s until they reached to northern Hungary, and uh, they were claimed, uh, they claimed themselves as Hungarian throughout the record books in Europe, even after they returned, and were afforded a degree of equal repression on par with the Hungarian serfs as well. So if we're going to suffer, we're going to suffer together. Now, in 1918, the Minister for Nationalities and the short lived Hungarian uh, National uh, Democratic Government, and I'm sure Hungarians are familiar with them short-lived democratic experiment uh, that happened right after World War II as well, devised a system of national autonomies, and the leaders of the Romanian National Party also promised autonomy for the non-Romanians of, of Transylvania. The fate of Transylvania was decided by arms and was confirmed by the Paris Peace Treaties, argued Homo Bettis. Strange bedfellows, but what about the 1960s when we think of uh, some of the bad times during communism? anybody here with the El Karsh uh, or the Utur, right? Well, during the Soviet era, Romania granted basic autonomy to Hungarians under Soviet pressure from 1952 to 68. Uh, the USSR was a multinational state and pushed that very strongly to uh, the, its client states. 70% of the in-charge uh, administrative positions were held by Hungarians in the uh, secular region. And um, the only problem is, is that Ceausescu came to power in 1965, abolished this region, uh, began an assimilation process, uh, which for most historians would leave the Magyarization attempts of the mid to late 1800s uh, seem like child's play, and dismissed, of course, Hungarians in positions of power. But what are some su successful times? If we're going to talk about uh, examples of economies uh, in the past, why not think about what's happening in the current state of Europe and throughout the world? Well, from my research and also from the backing of a fellow that is a journalist and, and interestingly, a fellow who lives in an uh, autonomous region of South Tyrol, which we'll talk about, Thomas Benedictor, writes that it's been po mostly a positive experience in these 60 different regions. 60 different regions among 21 different countries, so it's not an alien concept. Italy has five autonomous regions, Great Britain three. It's impossible to cut and paste these examples directly onto the Romanian-Hungarian situation, however. You can take certain parts, though, and apply them and see how they might hold water. While many examples exist in my paper, as I may have said, it's, I think the thing's 50 pages long, so I have a whole bunch of uh, different examples here, or as young Americans like to say, a ton. Um, I'm going to talk about three of them now. Cultural autonomy in Estonia, territorial, <coughs> territorial autonomy in South Tyrol, and the Hungarians and Romanian cooperation in Hungary. So Estonia adopted in 1925 autonomy created by Jewish and German minorities. It was considered the only functioning interwar autonomy in Europe. The Constitution there mentioned the right of ethnic minorities to establish institutions of self-government in accordance with the law on cultural time. So a law was passed and it's physically part of the Constitution. Local councils elected from the general population assumed full control of the public and the private schools in their region. 
operating in the mother tongue of the minority as well as supervision of all cultural activities. Now an interesting thing though is that this is a voluntary association. It's not a forced association. People can opt in as well as opt out of their participation in these activities and their membership of the group. Now if we apply this to the Hungarian Romanian model though, we'd ask ourselves, well, okay, it's a solid foundation in Estonia. The organization is very applicable, and so are the different appendages. However, there's a difficulty in getting a constitutional amendment passed in the current Romanian political climate. And it's unfortunately, when I ask myself, if, do I want to include the section on feasibility? I had to ask myself, well, if I talk too much about feasibility, I might have a kind of negative sign of favor. Right? Uh, now, I don't want this to be a counterfactual argument, though, because there is still potential. But this current political climate, unlikely to get the Romanian parliament to pass an amendment to their constitution for 7% of the population to allow for a cultural autonomy. And as uh, uh, Ken had the other day the discussion on uh, the United States trying to figure out whether or how we should recognize the Hoshus when he came to the United States and having that debate being as long and drawn out as it was when for most of us to say, welcome, my guy. You know, it's the same kind of thing. And I can imagine how long this, this would take in Romania to get through the parliament, if ever. So how about the South Tyrol? Well, just a tad of history here. Italy was awarded South Tyrol in 1920 and another of those crippling um, uh, treaties, many Europeans would argue. Saint Germain, Saint Germain, I think they might say in French, placed nearly a quarter of a million ethnic Germans under Italian rule. The Italian fascists later in the 1920s, the late 1920s even, uh, forced assimilation upon the German minorities and approximately 88% of the German minorities left the region. 